हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू सी एस टू जीरो जीरो फोर केमिकल टेक्नोलॉजी कोर्स सो लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द फॉर्मेटेशन इंडस्ट्री एंड द वेरियस प्रोडक्ट्स व्हिच वी कैन मैन्युफैक्चर थ्रू द फॉर्मेटेशन इंडस्ट्री सो इन कमिंग मॉड्यूल्स मॉड्यूल ट्वेंटी टू एंड ट्वेंटी थ्री वील ट्राई टू डिस्कस अबाउट द रबर इंडस्ट्री सो वी हैव सीन ऑलरेडी द रबर इज द इसेंशियल पार्ट ऑफ आर डे टू डे लाइफ एज द लाइक द टॉयज आर द गम बूट्स or the rubber bands or the tires whatever see so basic material in them is the rubber and the rubber generally we get from the rubber tree so you can see the rubber tree over here and the latex we are collecting in this one so we'll discuss more about how the rubber industry works and what is the scenario in rubber industry so in this one the polymerization reactions and other reactions that we will will not discuss in rubber industry but uh, that we will discuss in the polymer polymer industry or plastic industry so in this model we will try to cover most of the theory part and what are the different kind of rubbers and what are their uses and what are the different techniques we are using in the rubber industry and the uh, process wood diagram part and the chemistry part that we will try to discuss in the plastic and polymer industry so if we see the history of the rubber then the columbus found the natives of west indies playing with the rubber balls so he found over there and the rubber articles found in sacred well of maya in uh, yucatan so we know the mayan sanskriti which is very old uh, century uh, the uh, cultural society so in this one also we have found the rubber then the num name rubber came from the uh, property to rub out the pencil marks so earlier we were using the pencil for writing and the material which you can rub out those marker markings so from that one rub out those markings so it was name as rubber from that one then there are two kinds of rubber so earlier we were using natural rubber for the manufacturing so nowadays as the production of the natural rubber is uh, very less and also the tree plantation is not sufficient sufficient we have moved for the synthetic rubber also there are many drawbacks associated with the natural rubber, rubber and we have to do many uh, process over it so synthetic rubber uh, invented here we are uh, adding two more components and then we are blending and there are manufacturing synthetic rubber so the what are the drawbacks of natural rubber that we can overcome by using the synthetic rubber so most of the rubber we say nowadays it is it has the synthetic roots uh, roots of manufacturing in them then vulcanization that we have already learned in sulfur uh, industry so sulfur is used for vulcanization so the vulcanization started in 1839 which removed natural tackiness of natural rubber and commercialized so the vulcanization as the the tackiness or the stickiness of the rubber it was there in natural rubber so it was removed by vulcanization and vulcanization in short we can say is the uh, processing with the sulfur so natural rubber when processed with the sulfur it get more enhanced properties and the tackiness or the stickiness of the natural rubber is removed and that rubber we can use commercial uh, that we can uh, use for the commercialization process and the very best example is in manufacturing of the tires so here the as far as the rubber is considered then we have to uh, see the elastomeric materials and we will see what uh, what is meant by elastomeric materials then we will see what uh, the rubber actually does does then it is highly amorphous then highly random orientation and high elongation so these are the elastomers elastic means they can be straight to a limit so if you see the graph of this one so if you have this strain on the x axis and this stress on the uh, y axis suppose strain percentage uh, if you are uh, measuring and this stress in uh, the pressure unit then what happens the as the stress increases the stress and strain so they will show the linear so stress and strain up to the elastic limit it shows the linear linear uh, relationship that means the stress and strain they will proportional to each other so in this one if you stretch rubber or any elastomeric material then it can regain its original shape back so rubber within the elastic limit if you elongate and we release the pressure on it then it can regain its original shape but after elastic limit there is a point called the yield point and after that one the uh, when strain strain increases more and more but this stress which is uh, which will not show the much variation so with with very small variation of stress 
there is lot of variation in strain. So after the uh, yield point where the stress is almost constant, where our strain is increasing, but after the point, you can see the little bit of stress also induce more strain in the material. And after a certain point, there is a break point will occur, and at this point, the breaking will occur. So in this region, we can't regain the original shape back. But if you go on putting more and more uh, the this uh, stress, then it will ultimately break. So up to this to this level, so that is called elongation break. Means within this one, we can elongate rubber to its maximum strength. So here they will show the linear property. Then here the stress become constant and after that very small variation in stress also gives more variation in strain. So these are the general properties of elastomeric material. So rubber shows this property, hence this property we can use when we require the elastomeric properties in the material. Then this is the different graphs for the different materials. So we can see the strain and step. So this material, if we compare this one, then this material is very suitable because it can show the more linear relationship across the period. Whereas if we see this one, the stress increases and the strain variation is very less in this case. So depend upon the which kind of property we possess, we can choose the different material. Then elastomeric material without strain, if you see the internal arrangement, then we can say it is very uh, random arrangement in this one. Whereas if you apply this stress, then this elongation takes place. So each particle or the particle present in the matrix, it will show the elongation. So without stress, they will be at a resting position or in coil structure or the random structure manner. But if they get elongated when we apply these states. So after stretching, it may get elongated and that gives the, elong the elastomeric property to the material. Then elastomer processing. So if we see the reaction curve for this one, then there are many reactions that takes place. So if you see the synthetic rubber processing, then there are many kind of reactions occurring. So the yellow line shows that in original means the reactant when reacted, then they will, uh, they have to overcome the activation barrier over here and that much energy we have to supply in order to overcome the activation barrier. And after that activation barrier, when they form the produce, they will lose the energy. So the difference between the points, it will give the heat of reaction. So we react, then when the products have the less energy on reactor, then products are much stable. Whereas if suppose reactants are very less energy than products, then reactant will be stable and reaction may tend to go backwards. So in this case, the products becomes more stable as they have the very less energy compared to the reactant. But that energy, the energy barrier, we can reduce by means of the catalyst. So if you go by the catalytic path, then the active, the energy required is less. So catalysts, they will not take part in the reaction, but they will, uh, the, they will uh, support in the reaction by lowering down the activation energy gap. And also they will fasten the reaction. So in this one activation, the, by catalytic path, we can get the uh, products with less energy in less time. Whereas with uh, the, without catalyst, we can have the more time and the energy we supply it also very high. So the gap between the catalytic and non-catalytic, so this is the difference that we can uh, analyze and depend upon the difference which is reduced, it will show the catalytic ability of the that catalyst which we are using in the reaction processing. Then aliphatic thermoset elastomers. So the thermoset that will tell you what the exact meaning. So these are the most common elastomers. And these have a double bond after polymerization has occurred. And these are non-crystalline and these are the highly flexible. So this aliphatic thermostate elastomer, so they will produce this property and that uh, we can use for this specialized application. So the natural rubber, if you see, then uh, the we can get natural rubber from many plants that we'll see in the coming slides. So the common type are the gutta percha or the balata, which is trans polyisoprene or we can have the heavy rubber which is come from the heavy tree. So this kind of structure we can see in natural rubber. So this is cis polyisoprene. So generally the trans and cis bond we can see in the rubber material. Also the monomer when they are, uh, when they reacted they form the polymeric chain and which gives the rubber like structure.
So natural rubber, so raw material is extracted from the trees. So this is the rubber trees where we have to take a, uh, take a trans cut and uh, from which the juice will be extracted and that is collected in cups and then later on it can be processed. So here if you see the cut is uh, done and we can see the white liquid like the material is oozing out of the tree and that we can collect in the cups and then we can further process to have the rubber. So there are different plants which we can use for the rubber manufacturing. So the plant generally used are the dandelion, then gyale, then osage orange and then many more are the sources of rubber. But the most successful plant we see is the Hevia brasilensis. So this is the plant which is mostly used for the rubber manufacturing, the natural rubber manufacturing. So this is the native of South America. The countries which have the more plantation of the Hevia brasilensis is the Malaysia, Indonesia, and Liberia. Then trees becomes productive after age of seven years. So after seven years, we can have the cut on the trees and then the the latex or the white juice which is coming out of the tree so that we can get for another uh, years. So uh, these are the uses of the, um, this, uh, the rubber tree. So Hevia brasilensis, the production is more occurring in India. So India, if you see, the Kerala has the more rubber tree plantation. Also, the many parts of India, the rubber plantation is taking place in order to save the environment as well as to get the uh, rubber production. So if we see the process flow diagram for the rubber uh, manufacturing from the natural rubber, so the latex or the white juice which is coming uh, out of the tree, either we can concentrate or we can have the deliberate coagulation or we can have the natural coagulation. So natural coagulation, if we allow them, then in cup or lump and the tail is, we can get the brown creep or etc. Or we can have the small hurdles rim, then we can have the remills or we can have the amber with it. If we deliberately coagulate with the addition of acids and salts, then we have the rib smoke sheet, then we have the pale creep, then air dried sheet or we can have the foreign smoke, we can have the rib smoke sheet. And this is the typical factory processing line for latex grade rubber and the field grade rubber. So industrially we can have the latex from the trees, then we can have the bulking tank for the storage. Then we can have the coagulation in Thailand coagulation pits. Then we have the crusher to crush the coagulated mass. Then we have the creeper, then the shader to shade it, then we can dry it and then we can have the baller. Or we can have the field coagulator, then the pre-breaker step. Then the granulators are there to granulate them, then the creepers are there, then shredder to shred them, then it is dried and then have the, the baler. Then that can be processed for the good rubber quality material. So if you see the natural rubber processing, so you can see here the natural rubber processing. So these are the storage tank where we can store the latex and then we are allow them to coagulate. And here you can see the coagulated rubber mass and that can be broken down or that can be made into granules which we can use for the further rubber processing. Then the latex which is obtained is dried, sorted and smoked. So in this one the latex is dried and the sorted and smoked. So you can see the sheet like material which obtained from the latex after the drying and sorting and the smoking out in chamber and then that we can pack for the shipping or for the further manufacturing for the rubber products. The natural rubber, the difficulty with this one is that it has the problem with the strength. The strength of the natural rubber is not so much. Then availability as the tree are itself getting less, then deforestation is occurring. So the availability of the raw material is less for the natural rubber. Then it is being the natural, it, has, uh, it is prone to attack by the bacteria. So bacterial breakdown is uh, occurring in the natural rubber. Also the creeping problem is there in the natural rubber. So to avoid this one, we can have the synthetic rubber manufacturing. So natural rubber, the creep, then is sold by the Goodyear in 1800s. So Goodyear, you have heard the name, it is the famous tire manufacturing. So discovered that the polymer could be cross-linked, cured or vulcanized by heating with sulfur. So heating with sulfur is called the vulcanization. So sulfur attacks this double bond as many as eight sulfur atoms might be the bridge between the molecules. 
So the double bond, the sulfur molecule will get attacked, and here uh, it becomes the cross link, and the creeping problem is uh, then uh, removed by the process. So this was discovered by the Goodyear in the 1800. So the vulcanization is now taking place, and vulcanization makes the natural rubber more st uh, strained and more elastic. The synthetic polyisoprene or isoprene rubber. So we need to uh, supply of the natural rubber disappeared during World War One and World War Two. So this was the origin of uh, the formation of synthetic rubber. Then using the tires for bicycle and early cars, use the Ziegler-Natla catalyst system to improve the properties. The transverse nature of the rubber could be controlled by up to 90% in either direction. So the scarcity of the natural rubber raw material lead to the synthetic rubber. Also the problem with uh, the natural rubber overcame by use of synthetic rubber manufacturing. If you see the example, then one of the example is butadiene rubber or short BR. If you say BR, then the then the question comes: How this polymer different from the natural rubber? So this polymer, if you see over here, then the monomer is repeated over here, and that monomer will form the polymeric chain, which uh, gives them more strain than the more elastic properties. So no cis or no trans isomers present in this one as compared to the natural rubber. Then lower mechanical strength because of uh, number of pendant methyl group, but also uh, the more flexibility. Then it has a lower cost as synthetic from the cheap monomer. Then improvement of low temperature flexibility and compatibility with other polymeric material. So these are the things like cis and trans bond, then mechanical strength, and then the uh, the cost and the lower temperature flexibility and the uh, compatibility with other polymer material. It has shown uh, the more advantage over the natural rubber. And nowadays, most of the rubber which is manufactured is uh, gone by the synthetic route. Then there is styrene butadiene rubber, which is as BR. So you can see the many part of the gasket which are formed with this styrene butadiene. So these are the part which we can see uh, in the joints. So these are manufactured by the styrene butadiene rubber. Also the sheet which we uh, which we can see daily that is also made up of the SBR. Then other uh, the materials. Uh, we can manufacture by the use of SBR. The non-resistance elastomers. So NBR. So this is nitrile butadiene uh, rubber. So the copolymerization of butadiene and acryl nitrile. So the, these two materials, when we combine and when reacted, then we get the nitrile butadiene rubber. So it is more expensive than the styrene butadiene rubber or just butadiene rubber. On the next one, we can have the chloroprene rubber or the we can say a neoprene. Which shows the thermostability and non-flammability. So, depend upon the property which we desire or the end application of the rubber, we can have the synthetic rubber manufacturing to get that one, and we can overcome the disadvantages in the present in them. Then the thermoplastic elastomer that is EPM and EPDM. So, if you see the many of the properties of thermostat elastomers, so the resiliency and the elasticity, then more easily process. So here. Injection molding, extrusion, and other standard thermoplastic pro processes that can be done to have this one. Then highly compatible with the polyolefins. Then EF, uh, EPDM is cross links very lightly and may not be capable of being melted. So the thermoplastic elastomers they um, they can be processed in this way. And the molding and extrusion and other things that we'll see in the coming slides. Then block tripolymers such as SBS. With hard and soft chromines, and the poor compatibility with other rubbers, and it is melt processable. Then fluoro elastomers, if you see, then they will have the vinyl vinylidene fluoride monomer, and we have the tetrafluoroethylene monomer. So this monomer can be processed into the polymer by the reaction. The many of the desirable properties of the fluoro um, polymers, they have the low solvent effects, excellent for chemical and petroleum handling application. Where we want the material which we should not uh, react with chemical and petroleum, then it should have the high thermal stability. So it is used for the gaskets and seals. So in industry, if you see the many solvents are used, use. so uh, in them we can use this rubber. Also in the pipelines where steam is passing, so there we use, uh, there we want the gasket and seals. So there we want the rubber which can withstand more thermal, uh, uh, thermal uh, the gradation. Then, for high thermal stability, we can use the fluoroelastomers. 
then silicon if you see this silicon is incorporated in that one so silicon gives them uh, high property and we can have the different products from the silicon uh, rubber so we'll see now the how the rubber is processed or the elastomer is processed so generally we are using the compounding where we are using the the banbara mixer so here the uh, raw material will come and they will be mixed and we can get the mixture uh, and that directly we can react in the reactor then uh, the impact of the so these are the resin which we are using so here we can see the number will tell you the increasing toughness and the reasoning for that is given in this uh, column so here latex which is obtained by tapping the tray in such a manner as to allow the liquid to accumulate in small cups which must be corrected frequently to avoid uh, the putrefaction or the con contamination so the natural rubber we are uh, we are taking is directly it should be um, processed otherwise uh, being the natural it may get the contaminated or maybe uh, the putrefaction problem then it is strained and preservative is added then the rubber is separated by coagulation after uh, the adding of salt and acids and a white dust like mass form is milled and heated to remove the contaminants and to allow the drying so the whatever the uh, the natural liquid we are getting so that we are um, directly uh, sending to the processing then we are adding the ammonia as a preservative then coagulating and then forming the sheets and that sheet can be processed for the further product manufacturing so if you see the latex then what is the latex so here if we can see it is a 25% mass of polystyrene latex the volume unit is 2004 2004 and 2004 uh, the uh, 200.4 uh, nanometer and it contain 100 particles of 18 nanometer so if we can see so this is a micelle like structure so this structure we can find so these are the unit where we can find in this uh, area we can have the 100 particles of 18 nanometer size so here immersion if you see the immersion is nothing but the dispersed phase in the continuous phase so latex if you are see the latex particles are dispersed in the uh, the continuous phase and latex particle inside if you see so these are the polymeric material which are uh, the cross link over it so this emulsifier micelle then the monomer droplet you can find over here so in this solution if you are the emulsifier which uh, helps in emulsification then the latex particles get emulsified into this one and then we can carry out the reaction so here if you see the immersion polymerization so this is the start of the process so a if you see the monomer droplet then uh, water dissolved monomer in the b if you can say so here the water water dissolved monomer so these are the head group and tail group as we have seen in the uh, soap manufacturing in industry so then later on water dissolved surfactant molecule see we can see over here so head and tail uh, we can see then in d empty micelles where we can find the any uh, any material inside it then in e we can have the monomer solon micelles where the the material of the latex material they, we can find it bounded one and then rr initiative molecule dissolve in water in the last one so this is the start of process where immersion is occurring and immersion occurring by the way of micelles that we have seen in the surfactant industry then monomer droplet which is coming then above cmc level means above critical micelle concentration then they will form the micelles or below cmc they can have the dispersed phase and uh, the no droplets if we can find in this stage 3 so here the monomer droplet which has varying size of 10 micrometer then it will go up to the 0 micrometer then micelles they have the 5 nanometer then latex particles we can have the up to 5 uh, 5 nanometer so here in the stage 1 we can have the monomer droplet more in size and then the above cmc uh, the reaction this micelle formation takes place and then be below cmc that uh, particle then it will go to the this one so the reaction occurring from this phase to this phase then after the reaction is completed then we can say the no droplets are occurring over here so immersion polymerization the phases which are uh, dispersed in this one the reaction is taking place in between them so this uh, we will discuss more about in the polymer industry so if you see the particle nucleation then in the first part we can have so the conversion and the time if you see the in the first stage around 20% conversion it takes place in the particle nucleation then the second phase or the second stage 
we can have the particle growth or monomer disperse as droplets in the water. So that phase is the in this phase the conversion is very rapid and within less time we can have the more conversion. Whereas in the last stage where is monomer depletion, so when monomer is depletion and there is no material for the reaction, then whatever the time may be, the conversion is very very less over here. So in the second stage where particle growth and monomer is finally dispersed in the water we can have the more uh, the conversion in the second stage in rubber processing technology so rubber processing and the shaping then it comes the manufacture of tires and other rubber products then we can have the product design considerations